Hello, my name is Peter Bednarik and I'm the principal here at Scotia Glenville High School. Thank you for joining me for this presentation about advanced placement courses, college in the high school classes, and college planning. The information contained in this video is designed to provide our current sophomores and juniors and their parents with the information needed so that you can chart out your academic pathway through the remainder of your high school career. And it's also to guide you as you begin the process of college and career planning and all that comes along with all of that. I'll begin by briefly outlining some of the broad academic goals here at Scotia Glenville High School and explaining some of the details about our advanced placement program and the classes that we offer, along with our philosophy on AP. And then I'll provide you with some details about how there are other non-AP courses that bear college credit in the high school that you may be interested in selecting. Finally, I'll be joined by two of our guidance counselors who will offer some excellent resources and advice on beginning the college planning process. This video presentation is one that we would normally plan to do together here in the auditorium, and you'd have the opportunity to interact with us and ask us questions. Due to the current state of the pandemic and the way things are in our, in our community, we're offering this video as an alternative and to begin that dialogue with you on this important information. So obviously this is a less interactive setting than we would prefer, but please don't hesitate to reach out to my office or to the guidance office with any questions that you may have regarding this information or any of the course selection process. And I'll be providing our contact information later on in the video. As you know, we're at the beginning of having students select their classes for next year. And we want each of you to be uh, well informed and we want this process to be collaborative in nature. So each student should be having conversations with his or her guidance counselor and consult his, teacher, his or her teachers um, and academic heads along the way as questions arise. Thank you again for taking the time to watch this presentation and especially um, to take this step of planning for your future. And as we begin to prepare for the next academic year, even as we finish out this really challenging current school year that, that we're in. Please feel free to stop the video at any time, watch a section over, and please don't hesitate to reach out and contact us with any questions that you may have about the material here. As we begin the presentation, I'm going to begin by sharing some of the ongoing academic goals that we as an administration and faculty keep at the forefront while planning our course catalog and the offerings that we provide to students. We're always looking to provide students here at Scotia Glenville with an opportunity to challenge themselves and to offer them a real diversity of course offerings so that they have the opportunity to try different things and also challenge themselves as they move towards the next phase of their lives, whether that be college or career. In this presentation, we're going to talk specifically about advanced placement courses and also uh, other courses that we have which provide college credit in the high school. There are a number of different alternatives and opportunities, different pathways that students may choose to take as they make their way through their sophomore, junior, and senior year. For most students who are gearing up for college after high school, they will take some combination of advanced placement courses from the college board and or SUPA courses com coming from Syracuse University or the other college offerings that we have from a variety of other institutions. And we'll talk about each of those in this. The academic team at the high school believes that rigorous coursework, such as these advanced placement courses and other college courses, are really key to our students' success at the next level. And so to start, I'm going to speak to you a little bit about advanced placement courses specifically. I'm going to briefly cover what advanced placement courses are, some of the recognition that Scotia Glenville High School has received in the past, some of the benefits uh, to taking AP courses as opposed to some of the other college courses, and what it's like for students in our AP courses. And then we're going to get to talking a little bit about how to help each student make the right choices on this uh, variety of options that are in front of them. So let's start with a really basic overview of what advanced placement courses are first. These are college level courses that are offered in the high school. They are typically what you would find in an introductory level college class. 
And our students will take AP exams at the end of each of these course. The AP exams are developed by the College Board. And typically a score of three or higher on an AP exam will result in the student earning college credit depending upon the placement uh, where, they, where they end up attending college or university. And I'm going to share with you the AP philosophy at Scotia Glenville High School. And I'm going to share it three different times with three different sections highlighted. The first uh, section of the philosophy here at Scotia Glenville that I'd like to highlight is that uh, as a high school, we are committed to a wide array of AP courses. And these are taught by well-trained teachers based on the belief that participating in these challenging high school courses is the best way for students to prepare for success in college and career. And to that end, all of our teachers that teach Teach AP courses have uh, been required to attend professional development training, which is from the College Board. We currently have 13 different offerings of AP coursework in uh, at least four the four different departments that you see listed on the slide. There are two English courses. There are the courses in history and social science of microeconomics, psychology, U.S. history, and world history. In mathematics, we have both AB and the BC Calc courses, along with statistics, computer science principles, and computer science A. Uh, some of these courses will be rotated uh, over the course of years so that students, each student will have the opportunity during their four years to take advantage of them, but not every one of these in this department will be offered every single year. We also offer the AP courses in biology and chemistry. The second part of our AP philosophy that I'd like to highlight is the part that speaks to our interest in seeing students develop their academic skills and stretch their capabilities and prepare for the rigorous coursework which comes uh, after high school when they enter the college. The benefits of taking AP courses goes beyond just the increased level of rigor that students face. Um, on this slide you can see that AP is highly valued in the college admissions process and that students have the opportunity to earn valuable credit for their placement in college and sometimes even to advance their themselves into a higher level of coursework at the college level as they begin there. Some of the information on this next slide is a bit dated, but we know that the uh, majority of this information holds true. Um, many colleges rank AP coursework very high in their admissions process. The strength of curriculum and the grades that students receive are usually the top two factors in the admissions process decision. And additionally, the student's transcript that has AP and college and the high school courses on it is a clear signal to admissions officials that the students are challenging themselves and preparing for the kind of coursework that they're going to face at the next level. We do know that the process of taking an AP course develops the kinds of skills that students need for college success. And research has shown that students who uh, typically score well on AP exams, they generally go on to earn higher GPAs in college and usually have a higher graduation rate than their non-AP peers. And these statistics are not only good for students from an academic perspective, and that, but they also are beneficial from a financial perspective. So uh, students who are, are taking AP courses um, are much more likely to graduate from college on time. Uh, and in an era where many, many students do not graduate from college in the usual four years, um, this, is, this becomes a, a real cost efficiency. So my numbers are somewhat dated here, but um, the, the statistics on the last bullet here about the average cost of college for a single year um, being around $25,000, this data came from 2017. Um, and unfortunately, as we know, uh, for the most part, these, these numbers have only gone up. So any amount of savings that a student is able to do and if, that a family is able to do with um, limiting the amount of coursework that has to be taken in college is always of great benefit. And lastly, on this point, I just want to add that sometimes taking AP courses can lead to an expansion of students' options when they move to the next level. In terms of being able to get into upper-level college courses sooner or to pursue a double major, the third portion of the AP philosophy at Scotia Glenville High School relates to the exam, as we believe that the AP exam is an essential component of finishing any AP course with fidelity. And 
I'm just going to provide a little bit of information about the AP exams. This is what we know uh, at this stage in the planning process. Each year, uh, the fee uh, sometimes varies uh, from the previous years, but what I can do is provide for you kind of what we have been seeing most recently. Scotia Glenville doesn't have control over which days the exams are given, but across the across the world, um, on different dates in May, each exam is slated to be given on a particular day. Uh, the exams are typically two to three hours, and we host those here at the high school. As you can see, the exams are a combination of multiple choice questions and free response items, um, depending upon the different subject areas being tested. So I mentioned the exam fee a few minutes ago, and this is what the exam fee was for 2020. Generally, the number might fluctuate a little bit, but it's generally going to be in the range uh, the, of $94. There is assistance available for students who have financial need. The College Board usually offers a fee reduction, and then there is some additional assistance that can be given through the school and the guidance department. Our AP exam fees, a very important date here, are always due by November 1st of the year that the students are taking AP courses, even though the exams are not taken until the month of May, as we just covered. So because each school and university is a little bit different in terms of the way they accept uh, credit or, or grant credit for AP courses, students are genuinely uh, rightly interested in what the courses, what, how the different colleges and universities that they're interested in might accept uh, their credit on AP exams and in AP courses. So this next slide uh, shows that if you go to the College Board website, you can find a link there which will take you to any of the schools and universities that a student might be interested in and search their individual policies on uh, AP placement for credit. Uh, so all you have to do is go to the College Board website here, collegeboard.org uh, backslash AP credit policy, and that will link you to an alphabetical list of all the schools and universities that are available in our country, and that then provides a link for students to be able to research um, how each different school that they may be interested in will handle or grant credit for AP coursework. Another concern that students and families often have is the release of their scores and whether or not the AP scores will be automatically released or not. The next slide um, shows you is, a, is actually a, a screen from the College Board's website, and this is the form that students and families can use in order to have control over their AP scores. A student can elect to have all their AP scores automatically sent to the universities and colleges that are on their, on their interest list, or they can hold out and wait until they see what their scores are and then release them at a later time. So moving away from advanced placement for the moment, I'd like to also share with you some of the other opportunities that we have for college credit in the high school. And beginning with our SUPA program, that's the abbreviation we use for Syracuse University Project Advance. These uh, two courses that we have are courses that are sponsored by the Syracuse University. And again, our teachers are teaching these courses. They are um, officially adjunct professors of Syracuse University. The two courses that we offer are from SUPA, from Syracuse University, are Intro to Financial Accounting, which is a three credit course, and uh, Physics 1 and 2, which as you can see are eight credits of Syracuse University credit. So these courses are different from AP courses in that they come directly from a specific university. And if a student um, achieves credit in these courses, they can either use them at Syracuse University, obviously, or um, use the credits to transfer to another school. These courses also differ from AP in that they don't have an AP exam as the culminating aspect of the course, and students will earn Syracuse credit as long as they pass the course with at least a C average. The cost structure for paying for Syracuse University Project Advance is a little bit different from AP as well. And on this next slide, you can see um, that the money is a little bit higher than just paying for the AP exam of $94 or however, as close as that may be. 
But even with the slightly higher cost, this chart shows a comparison of what students would be paying if they were taking the same courses at Syracuse University. So um, you can see the per credit hour uh, comparison there, where an SG student is going to pay $112 for um, one credit of this Syracuse University Project Advanced credit. If they were actually attending Syracuse University, it would be $1,800. And then the bottom line uh, across, moving across to the right is the reduced price, and that is for um, students who qualify for financial assistance. That's the price that Syracuse University would be offering. You can see here the price comparisons for the three credit course, which is what our accounting class is, and then also for the eight credit course, which is what our physics course uh, is. So beyond just Syracuse University courses, these two courses from Syracuse, we also have a variety of other offerings from other local colleges. And the next couple of slides are going to display what those offerings are and the different costs associated with them. This information can also be found on our guidance department uh, portion of our website at the high school. And so I'll provide a link for that so that you can visit that portion of our website if you'd like additional information or to take a deeper look at those classes. All of these courses, of course, are in our course catalog and our guidance counselors are able to answer questions as well as our academic heads and department chairs in each of the departments. And so once you've had an opportunity to take a look at all these different options that are in front of you, um, it becomes time to start making choices. And that's the part of the year that we have reached now here in February. Um, this next slide shows the timeline which begins with this information. So the presentation that, that we would usually have at this time of year would have all the information contained in this video. And during the remainder of this month, each student is going to be spending time working with their counselors to make their course requests. So I encourage students and families to be talking about their decisions around uh, course requests for the following year. And if you have any questions, of course, to be reaching out to me or reaching out to your guidance counselor. Once all the course requests are in, the master schedule will be made for next year and counselors will work with students if there are any conflicts that arise in terms of uh, working out the schedule that best fits their needs based on uh, how the master schedule is designed. And then the next step will simply be for students to receive any summer coursework that they may have for college classes or for AP courses um, as they lead into next year. Students will complete their summer assignments over the course of the time that we're out of school. And then hopefully we'll be back to uh, our a more regular um, school type of school year than what we have encountered this year and we'll start back in the fall students will be in their ap courses in their college classes and i just want to point out again that november 1st deadline for uh, turning in the exam fees for ap courses the other college in the high school classes generally have their tuition payments due in the fall Generally, this happens during September, and uh, some offer the opportunity to pay on a payment plan throughout the course of the school year. So our final slide in this section just has some important links that you might find helpful as you go through this planning process. Uh, there's the AP information on the College Board, uh, on the College Board's website. And as I pointed out earlier, there are a lot of good resources on the College Board website that help link you to the different colleges and universities and the programs that, that they offer and how having those types of courses can help students in the admissions process. Now that we've talked about all the different college and the high school opportunities that students have and the course selection process, we're going to move on to a segment where we have two guidance counselors who are going to share some slides with you that will help aid you as you begin the college planning process, as you finish out your high school career and begin to look ahead towards the next step. Hello, my name is David Langdon, high school guidance counselor, and I would like to welcome you to Scotia Glenville's College Planning Night presentation. We always like to begin with a rundown of graduation requirements, including the number of credits for each discipline that are required to graduate. In addition to these credits, there are two types of diplomas your student could earn, at a Regents and an Advanced Regents. 
For the Regents Diploma, students are required to complete five Regents exams. One English, two Social Studies, one Math, and one Science. For the Advanced Regents, students are required to take and pass eight Regents exams. One English, two Social Studies, three Math, two Science. Since this is a College Planning Night presentation, I also wanted to point out the various levels of AP classes that we have in each discipline. For science, we have two AP science classes available. For math, we have three classes available. For history, we have three AP classes available. For English, we have two AP level classes available, as well as two levels of AP computer science. In addition to AP classes, we offer numerous levels of honors within each discipline, as well as several college and the high school um, classes where students can earn college credit, including in our business department and world languages. For those students seeking an advanced Regents diploma, on top of the eight required Regents exams, the traditional path is to take three high school years of world language French, Spanish, or German, and also take and pass the Checkpoint B exam at the end of their third year. For those students that do not wish to take World Languages or the, check, or the Checkpoint B exam, there is an alternative called a five credit sequence. These five credits could be earned in business, technology, family consumer science, music, art, or even career and technical education. Therefore, a student can still earn an advanced regents diploma without world language. I invite you to visit the high school guidance website and see a, and read a description on all these classes in more detail. Now let's move on to reasons for attending college. One of the things that we talk a lot with our students is to know yourself, know your strengths, know your weakness, make a pros and cons list. Lists can really help. It's important to be honest with yourself. Think about what you want, what is important to you, take into account the changing world that we all find ourselves in at the moment, and also to be open to alternatives. Look at different paths to get to the same outcome. Look at two-year schools, four-year schools. Look at the different alternatives that are out there. Start thinking about what you want from a college what majors are offered, the admissions requirements, location and size. Requirements are changing, especially this year, next year, and probably the next several years. If you have older siblings that, that apply to school, just know that those admissions requirements that they faced they may very well be different now. Admission requirements are changing. When you consider location, cost, Activities such as athletics, you start narrowing down your options. You take the over 5,000 schools available and you narrow it down to a reasonable six, seven, maybe eight schools to apply to. Many colleges are still doing on-campus visits, but even a virtual tour is better than no tour at all. Start looking at curriculum, the living accommodations, campus atmosphere, Seek alumni experiences. Keep options open. Create a diverse application list. Look at big schools, small schools, city, rural. Don't necessarily cross anything off the list, but continue to explore. Hi there, this is Miss Balch. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, what colleges are looking at when they're looking to admit you to their college. So the thing they put the most weight on is your high school transcript. So they're going to look at the courses you've taken and received high school credit for, typically from ninth grade on. Some of you have taken high school classes in eighth grade, so those courses will show. They're going to look at how much math, science, foreign language you have. They're going to look at if you've challenged yourself with any honors or AP classes. They're going to look at your GPA. Sometimes they're even going to see if you've made progression and if you've improved your grades over the course of your high school career, which is super important. Um, so transcript is one thing. And then they're also going to look at your SATs and ACT scores. They're going to look at some of the extracurricular 
activities you've done since high school. So if you've done give, if you've been a participant in a sport, clubs, outside of school activities, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, things like that. Next, they're going to look at your essay. Um, so you're going to get a choice of essay topics, and they're going to re review that. Lastly, they're going to look at your letters of recommendations. Typically, you're going to get one or two letters from a teacher, and most students need their high school guidance counselor to write a letter on their behalf. So they're going to look for things that set you apart that your teachers and your counselor have noticed. Moving on, there's some dates for SAT registration, ACT registration, the NCAA for those students who are thinking about participating in a Division I or Division II sport. You need to register for the NCAA by spring of your junior year. There's a link there. Um, typically, we give the SAT here in May. This year, uh, we're not sure. We're waiting to hear about that. So what do you need to do now? You need to generate a list of colleges that meet your criteria. Um, you can use Supermatch on Naviance, which is a program we've introduced you to. You can take a look at how far away from home you want to be, college majors, if there's activities you want on the college campus, uh, make sure you search for that. So you're just going to generate a list of colleges. You're going to visit as many schools as you can. Spring is a good time for college visits or over a break, like our April break is a good time because most colleges are still in session. There's also some virtual visits you can do now. Also your resume. So your resume can be generated on Naviance. It's fairly easy and straightforward. We can help you with that if you want to come in. You want to also take a look at college deadlines know the testing requirements, if schools are going to waive the SATs, ACTs, or not. And then you're going to want to map out letters of recommendation. So think of teachers you've connected with over the years, and you're going to want to think of one to two teachers to write you a letter of rec. So Naviance is something I touched on. Um, you've all had some access with Naviance. That's the site where you can do career searching, college searching, that's where you can do your resume. Um, so definitely make an appointment with your counselor. We can help you with that. There's also some Sites Guidance Direct, College Board are super helpful resources to help guide you. And then there's the Common Application and the SUNY Application, which many of you will be using um, for your college applications. This is a screenshot of what Naviance looks like once you're logged in. As you can see from the top, there's some tabs. You're going to use um, the About Me tab to write your resume. You're going to use the College tab to search for specific colleges to do the super match where you can generate a list of those colleges. The Career tab, you can search for careers, career clusters. You can do the Career Interest Profiler, which matches up careers that would match up with your personality. Um, so this is this is Naviance. There's a lot you can do. You might want to take some time to navigate it and then definitely set up a meeting with your counselor to kind of go over it in more detail. Some suggestions. It's, we always suggest families have like a family email so that all correspondences from college go to one place so they're not ending up in any junk mail spam. Um, so if you make one family email, we'd highly recommend that. You also want to show interest in colleges, so schedule some visits, attend open houses, any virtual opportunities you're going to want to take advantage of. And then you're going to want to continuously check the Scotia Glenville High School website. We have a lot of resources on there to help you with your journey. But if I can't stress it enough, if, you know, set up meetings with your counselor, whether it's virtual or in person, and we will help guide you along the way. Thanks again for joining us for this presentation. I appreciate your patience with the format that we have to use at this time. And I want to just remind you that you can always reach out to my office or to the guidance office, reach out through uh, your students if you have any questions about any of the material presented here as you begin to move on in course selection for our sophomores and juniors and you begin thinking about what the next step after Scotia Glenville High School will bring. Thank you and be well.